Hi, I'm Diana. Something I've been thinking about for quite some time now is our fear of death. And probably me even saying this word death to you is making you seize up inside. And we've all done this. We all have this innate fear of our finite reality. There is so much more to us than the physical experience of living and dying. And what I'd like to be able to do at this time is share some of my experiences with you. Many years ago, I was um, going to school in Canada. You can probably tell I've got a Canadian accent, even though I've lived in England for many years now, which seems to be more my home now than Canada. But that's another story for another time. Um, for a long time, there's always been a belief within me that we need to be able to address the experience of death in a much more honest and open way. It is still one of our taboo topics, along with cancer, along with terminal illness, along with AIDS, along with all these things that nobody really wants to talk about. We need to talk about them. We need to put these things out there and open up and embrace each other and connect with each other because every one of us is going to die. Just as we are born, we will die. And it is part of the living process to accept that in its reality. My concern very often is that we see people who are terminally ill and we see them on the media and so forth and we all suddenly look at our own mortality and we become very frightened. My belief is that we, we celebrate the birth of a child, don't we? Every one of us is in joy of uh, the birth of a baby and, and how wonderful it is and that's a great thing. But we also need to embrace the ending of the life as much as the beginning. And we've spent too long missing out on that. It is a sadness. There's no two ways about it. When we love somebody, we really connect with them, then there will be a sadness when we lose them. That is part of the grieving process. Just as Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross said many years ago, and quite an amazing woman and a true heroine of mine, when she wrote the book about death and dying, it made absolute sense. She was connecting with these people as an orthodox doctor and she was able to see things that her scientific experience of being a doctor did not credit, did not understand, had no understanding or comprehension of. She was able to see something beyond the physical death and that is, for want of a better word, the spirit the soul, the life force that is beyond the the cocoon or whatever you would like to call the body that we have. And our society seems to spend so much time watching the body, making sure that we look good as we're getting older, we live older than we've ever done before, and we're supposed to still look like 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, whatever. We have such a fear of the dying process that we embrace Botox. We have our faces and our bodies distorted into creations that are not us, that are not a part of our human spirit. Death is inevitable. All of us will die. My concern is how many of us are living. The dying will happen. That is true of every one of us. But how many of us are truly embracing life in the moment? I have had experiences throughout my life of people who have died. We all do. From a, a young boy when I was in school who had leukemia uh, to the president of our high school uh, student group who, um, I'm not sure which cancer he had, but he lost his leg um, and eventually he died. And I remember writing a poem for him and thinking, we have nothing to do, what can we do? I felt so impotent, a genuine sense of impotence because I was not accepting the fact that it was his time. He was a young man, he was only 17, 18, but it was his time. And in my own naivety, I did not realize that that was his time. When I was in nursing, we had many times of experiencing death and recognizing people for their true spirit. And I remember what could only be described rather like the, the China syndrome of the dying room, 
where in the past these young girls were left to die because it was socially unacceptable to have a, a, a female child. And the same with, with the elderly in our country, in our society, in Western culture. We have a similar attitude. We have the dying room. We may not call it that, but we have the dying room. You reach a certain age, you appear to be a certain way, and there is this attitude that you are not any longer worthwhile. I disagree with that totally. And certainly in my nursing career, I saw that there were people who were put into a room because there was a belief that they were dying. And I remember taking the ribbons off uh, a funeral wreath that was put in this woman's room. Can you imagine the atrocity of that? Death in the face. The woman is dying. Put a funeral wreath in a room. How crass are we? I took the ribbons off the, the wreath and I was doing her hair and putting ribbons in. And she turned and she looked up at me and she had decubitus ulcers, dreadful open wounds from not being rolled over properly, not being looked after because she was dying. Or they believed that she was dying. And she said to me, I'm not dying. I'm not ready to die yet. And she pulled herself round. Why? I think because someone began to believe in her. She had the opportunity to be heard, to be valued, to be respected. We need to begin to live before we go into this bizarre world of fear of death so we forget to live. Why do we say to somebody, you have two months to live? And then why do we expect them to live further than that? We need to embrace our own energy, our own belief in our own existence and allow ourselves to truly embrace life and to connect with each other. If someone has found out that they are terminally ill, are they any different from anyone else? Are we not all in a terminal state? Are we not all in a situation where death is inevitable? <laughs> are we not all terminal? Can we not somehow take away the stigma, the taboo, the feeling of isolation and alienation when someone is called terminally ill, can we not embrace them and say, I feel, I feel for you because I feel for me too. We are all in the same boat. Let's talk about it. Let's connect. Let's begin to make a difference. Please.